Greetings everyone and welcome to another special Halloween Closer Look. Today we're going to be taking a look at Wes Craven's directorial debut, The Last House on the Left from 1972. And we'll also be looking at Wes Craven's directorial debut, The Last House on the Left from 1972. Yes, I have two editions. This of course is the original MGM Blu-ray release which is actually quite a nice addition, I have to say. It's got a lot of good extras on there. We'll take a look at that. And this is the special edition box set from Arrow Video. Lots of goodies to take a look at in both of those. So let's not waste any time. Last house on the left. To avoid fainting during this episode of the Multimedia Chronicles Closer Look, just keep telling yourself it's only a YouTube video. It's only a YouTube video. So, the first time I ever heard of The Last House on the Left was in the original theatrical trailer for the first Nightmare on Elm Street, where the narrator said, From Wes Craven, director of The Hills Have Eyes, and Last House on the Left, a new masterpiece in fantasy terror, Nightmare on Elm Street. Of course, I had no idea what Last House on the Left was. I mean... I was always a big Haunted House fan, so I just assumed from the title, oh, that must be a Haunted House movie that he did or something. I really liked Nightmare on Elm Street. I'd really like to see that Haunted House movie he did called Last House on the Left. Yeah, it wouldn't actually be until I picked up this Blu-ray right here, some almost 30 years later, that I finally saw the movie, and I was like, okay, this is definitely not a Haunted House movie. Like, I honestly had no idea what I was getting into. All I had heard was, it's really shocking and disturbing and, you know, not going to be everybody's cup of tea. So I watched it, essentially going in cold, and it was not what I was expecting, but holy moly, did it ever blow me away. Um, I was really impressed with the fact that here's a film from 1972, and they are really pulling no punches as far as the... Uh, the subject matter and the shock value and honestly i think it still holds up really really well today um it's a little bit cheesy towards the end when it actually gets into the revenge part it's a revenge movie essentially but when it gets into the revenge part of it it does go a little bit over the top but that's okay you really don't mind you're just kind of along for the ride uh but there are moments in this that are definitely disturbing i mean th this essentially was the movie that I think was most responsible for kicking off the revenge movie craze of the early 70s and uh, certainly one of the most influential and while a lot of movies in that genre have I don't know you call it a cheese factor where you know you can't really take it too seriously because it's you know obvious to just going for the shock value and stuff but there's just something about this one where yeah they're going for the shock value but there's, I don't know, call it an honesty about it, the way that everything is portrayed and just the, the, the pure, unfiltered evil of the baddies in this. Like, you really buy it. Like, you really buy into it quite easily. And I think it makes it way more disturbing than a lot of other examples in the genre that, that followed. You know, but isn't that always the way? Like, the one that sort of starts the craze is almost always the best <laughs> and then all the others are kind of pale imitations not to say that there's a, that you know all the entries in the revenge genre aren't worth seeing um i haven't seen very much myself i've only kind of you know have a passing familiarity with the subgenre it hasn't really been my thing i'm more into other stuff i guess you know serial killers and supernatural horror and sci-fi horror and classic monsters that sort of thing is more my my uh, cup of tea. But as far as big notable examples of the subgenre, I mean, I'm certainly, you know, quite happy to take a look at those. And Last House on the Left is definitely one of the creme de la creme of the revenge genre. So um, if you're looking to get your feet wet in that subgenre of horror, this is definitely a good place to start. Just be warned, as I say, 
it, it's old, but it holds up really well, and it's almost as disturbing now, even in our jaded times, as it was back in 1972 when it first came out. I mean, I think of how disturbing it is now, and think how much more disturbing it must have been back in 1972, because there really wasn't anything else like this at the time. Oh, you had your schlocky drive-in horror and whatnot, but it was nothing on the pure visceral, believable level that this was. And I think that's really what got to people about this, was this was a scenario that kind of put the whole idea of, you know, a parent's worst nightmare of their teenagers going out on the town and getting mixed up with the wrong people and something horrible happening to them. Well, this takes that parental fear and pushes it to the nth degree. That's what makes it scary, is the fact that it's not that far-fetched. Something like this could happen. Things like this have happened if you look at, you know, if you're into true crime at all. I mean, there's, there's a lot of genuinely evil people out there who do horrible things to other people. So, yeah, it's, it's a good one. <laughs> Alrighty, so let's uh, head on down to the black box. And we'll take a look at both editions here, see what they have in common, where, where they differ. Obviously, the Arrow edition has a lot more stuff. I am happy to report, though, most, if not everything, from the MGM edition has been ported over. Um, I should also mention the reason I got this. You know, I was quite happy with this edition. But the reason I got this is there was about a month on Amazon.ca where, for whatever reason, this went on, like, fire sale. It was literally, like, 6 or $7 for almost a month. Um, I told everybody about the sales. I said, guys, you got to get Last House on the left. Like, they have the big special deluxe collector's edition for like six or seven bucks. So, needless to say, me and just about everybody I know jumped on the deal and, uh, you know, took full advantage of that. I don't know if it was a typo or, or what, but I mean, it stayed at that price for a long time and just kept dropping and dropping and dropping. It's like they were trying to just give it away. Maybe that was it. Maybe it's just too disturbing a movie for the masses and they had all these copies of it just sitting on the shelf collecting dust nobody was buying them i don't know anyway i'll include amazon links to both of these editions in the um in the description there if you'd like to add either of them to your collection um yeah good stuff so anyway let's head down to the black box and get a closer look at both of these editions and see what kind of goodies they got all right so we'll start with the original MGM Blu-ray release of Last House on the Left. Now this here is just the regular edition with an art card added in. Yeah, there was a bunch of these released by MGM uh, several Halloweens ago. I think they did a couple years of them actually. So I did a video about these art cards a while back. I collected some of them, basically just picking up some of the movies that I didn't have. But the nice thing about them was the editions were cheap. They tended to have pretty decent transfers, um, but they were editions that had been available for a while. They were just being repackaged with these cool art cards. So this is the Last House one. It's very nice. Nothing on the back. And there we go. So this, of course, is the unrated cut. It's actually quite a nice collector's edition, considering it's just a studio release. You know, as you can see, there's quite a wealth of extras there. We'll uh, go over that in just a moment. And then inside we even have some nice disc art. Very nice. And then, of course, an eco case. But, uh, yeah, so I'll just let you take a look at the snazzy art card here, and we'll quickly go over the extras. So the extras on this one, we've got audio commentary by director Wes Craven and producer Sean Cunningham. Another audio commentary with actors David Hess, Mark Scheffler, and Fred Lincoln. Still Standing, The Legacy of the Last House on the Left featurette with Wes Craven. Celluloid Crime of the Century documentary. Scoring Last House featurette. Tales That'll Tear Your Heart Out, which is an unfinished short film by Wes Craven. A deleted scene of Mary dying at the lake. Never before seen footage. It's Only a Movie featurette. Outtakes and dailies, forbidden footage, and uh, the original theatrical trailer. So, there you go. I mean, as far as Bargain Bin Studio releases, that is actually a pretty nice deluxe edition, and I was quite content with that for a very long time. And then, as I mentioned in the intro, the Deluxe Arrow Collector's Edition was ridiculously on sale on Amazon.ca, so... I wasn't about to pass that up. I mean, it was definitely a worthy upgrade. 
Very nice. Let's give you a look here. Um, there's quite an ocean of extras here, which uh, we'll go over in just a minute here. And then looks very nice on the shelf with that spine. I don't think there's anything on the top. All right, so let's take the, uh, the backing off. And then on the back, we have the words from the movie poster. To avoid fainting, keep repeating. It's only a movie. Only a movie. Only movie, only movie, only movie, only movie, only movie. All right. So if we slide out the contents here, you can see it's nice, sturdy, hard box. The, these hard boxes that Arrow uses are really, really nice. Very durable. Stand up to uh, a lot of uh, shelf wear. So, we'll take a look at the contents of the disc in just a moment. Contents of the disc. Contents of the disc packaging, I guess. So, first up, we have this lovely book, which has all kinds of stuff about the making of the movie. I love these. Uh, this is one of the reasons I really like to get these collector's editions, actually, because these books tend to be fantastic. Not only do they have beautiful uh, reproductions of photos and whatnot, but we have some of the original posters there and uh, high quality photos from the movie and publicity stills and stuff. But the actual essays that they include are often really fascinating reading and really uh, get into you know, the nitty gritty of making the movie. And in this case, uh, a lot about the cultural impact of it and sort of its importance in the history of exploitation cinema and whatnot. It's just a really fascinating book. It's really good stuff. Now here, I can't really show you this properly, but uh, let's uh, let, let, let's take a step back and I'll show you what this is. Okay, so let's see how well we can show this here. So first up, we have this very nice poster of the original art that was commissioned for the box set. Very nice. And then on the back, we actually have a reproduction of the original theatrical poster, which is also very very nice yeah that is some disturbing stuff right there okay so let's take a look at the actual blu-ray itself so uh reversible cover as is often the case with these collector's editions so it has the or some of the original poster art on this cover so i of course reversed it so that it had that instead of the uh, the new artwork, which is on the box. Much like I do with the Scream Factory editions, I'll have the new artwork on the slip cover, and then the uh, old artwork, or the uh, movie poster artwork on the actual keep case. So here we actually have a three disc set. So this set actually has three cuts of the movie. So I think we've got one cut on here, the other two cuts on here, and then this is actually the soundtrack CD. So if we just pop this out here, you can see that it's it's the same artwork that's on the hard box, basically. So I just flipped the uh, the cover around there, and then inside, just move this here. So we got a little ad for the Slayer, and then some more Arrow titles on the back. They generally include those just to entice you further. And then we have these lovely reproductions of lobby cards. You can see here, color artwork on the back. Very nice artwork there. And there. Love that uh, scene. The vengeful father. There we go. Nothing too gratuitous on the lobby cards, obviously, because. They're giving them away in the lobby. <laughs> it's like, no, if you want to see the real horror, you got to pay for a ticket and go see the movie. But, uh, yeah, so really nice. So let's uh, put all of this back together here. So generally, I like to put the, the book in first, sticking out slightly. Then I put the poster in, and then I put the Blu-ray in like that. And it all slides in quite nicely. Very snug. Okay, so let's uh, quickly go over the extras here. Well, I say quickly. As quickly as I can, it's quite an impressive list. Okay, here we go. So, three disc limited edition contents. Three cuts of the film, newly restored in 2K from original film elements. 
Original uncompressed mono audio. Optional English subtitles for the deaf and hard of hearing. Six collector's postcards. Double-sided fold-out poster. Reversible sleeve featuring original and newly commissioned artwork. Limited edition 60-page perfect bound book featuring new writing on the film by author Stephen Thrower. And the soundtrack CD. So now getting into the disc by disc contents. Disc 1 uh, is the unrated cut. So it's a high definition Blu-ray 1080p presentation of the unrated version. Isolated score, newly remastered from the original 17.5 inch magnetic tracks. Brand new audio commentary with Bill Ackerman and Amanda Rays. Archival audio commentary with writer-director Wes Craven and producer Sean S. Cunningham. Archival audio commentary with stars David Hess, Mark Scheffler, and Fred Lincoln. You're going to notice pretty much every single extra that was on the MGM edition has been ported over to this edition. So if you're concerned about missing anything, don't worry, Arrow's got you covered. Archival introduction to the film by Wes Craven. Still Standing, The Legacy of the Last House on the Left, archival interview with Wes Craven. Celluloid Crime of the Century, archival documentary featuring interviews with Wes Craven, Sean S. Cunningham, actors David Hess, Fred Lincoln, Jeremy Rain, Mark Scheffler, and Martin Cove. Scoring Last House, archival interview with actor-composer David Hess. Yes, David Hess actually did the music for the movie, which is pretty cool. He was quite an accomplished uh, musician as well as an actor. It's Only a Movie, The Making of Last House on the Left, archival featurette. Forbidden Footage, the cast and crew discuss the film's most controversial sequences. See, this is nice. These are a lot of the same features that were on the MGM edition, but they're actually telling you what they are. <laughs> yeah, on the MGM one, they just tell you the title of the featurette, but it doesn't really tell you what it is. Junior's Story, a brand new interview with actor Mark Scheffler. Blood and Guts, a brand new interview with makeup artist Ann Paul. The Road Leads to Terror, brand new featurette revisiting the film's original shooting locations. Uh, the deleted scene of Mary dying at the lake. Extended outtakes and dailies, newly transferred in HD. Trailers, TV spot and radio spots, and image galleries. <sighs> That's just disc one. Disc two... <laughs> disc two has the Krug and Company and R-rated cuts. So the Krug and Company cut, that's an early cut that they showed to test audiences. And interesting to note, um, it's actually a little bit censored above what was uh, ultimately released. So the unrated cut, I think, is generally the way to go if you want to see it as uncensored as possible. So uh, the Krug and Company R-rated cuts, we have a high-definition Blu-ray 1080p presentation of both cuts. The Craven Touch, brand new featurette bringing together interviews with a number of Wes Craven's collaborators, including Sean S. Cunningham, composer Charles Bernstein, producer Peter Locke, cinematographer Mark Irwin, and actress Amanda Wyss. Early Days and Night of Vengeance, filmmaker Roy Frumkes remembers Wes Craven and Last House on the Left. Tales That'll Tear Your Heart Out, the unfinished short film by Wes Craven. A Q&A with Mark Scheffler from a 2017 screening of the film at the American Cinematheque. And Songs in the Key of Krug, never-before-seen footage from an archival interview with David Hess. And finally, Krug Conquers England, an archival featurette charting the theatrical tour of the first-ever uncut screening of the film in the UK. Yeah, I think this one may have been on the so-called Video Nasties list of banned films in the UK for a long time, so uh, it was only, you know, somewhat recently that uh, they finally got to see the uncut version in the UK. So, disc three, we have The Last House on the Left original motion picture soundtrack, which is a CD apparently featuring the complete film score. Very cool stuff indeed. So, there we go. The Last House on the Left. So, there you go. Obviously, 
you know, if you really want to go the full nine yards, the Arrow Edition is the one to get. I mean, in particular because it has that wonderful book with all kinds of interesting stuff about the making of the movie and the cultural impact of it and such. The essays that Arrow puts into those booklets in their collector's editions, I have yet to find one that isn't absolutely fascinating reading. Like, they get some really good writers for those uh, with some genuinely interesting insights into whatever movie they're talking about. Um, and then, of course, you have the added bonus of having all three cuts, which is great. This one, you just get the unrated cut, which honestly is the best cut if you want to see everything in all its glory. Um, but this one at least gives you the option of seeing the other cuts and gives you a little more insight into the, you know, the, the editing process and the creative process and such when you can compare the cuts like that. So it's always cool to see. Alrighty, well that is it for this Closer Look. Hope you enjoyed. I will see you next time. Until then, thanks for watching. Big thanks to my Patreon sponsors. Be sure to catch me on Twitch. I stream almost every day. And sayonara. <laughs>